Namaste. Welcome to another episode of India Detail. Today, we are going to talk about the rule of the Indo-Greeks. As we know, after the death of Alexander, his governors declared themselves independent and began to rule the lands that were bestowed upon them. Alexander's officer, Seleucus Nicator I, who ruled Bactria, established the Seleucid Empire in the 4th century BCE. Nicator was one of the earliest Greeks who invaded the Mauryan kingdom, ruled by Chandragupta Maurya. In the Seleucid Mauryan battle, Nicator was defeated and a truce was called. It is said that Chandragupta Maurya married Nicator's daughter, Helena. Megasthenes, Nicator's ambassador and historian, stayed back in the Mauryan court and wrote an account on Mauryan India called Indica. Nicator passed away in 280 BCE, but his empire continued till the 1st century BCE. More on that in a bit. First of all, let's go through some sources that talk about the Indo-Greeks. There is very little literary evidence that tells us about the Indo-Greek rulers. Most of the information about the Indo-Greeks comes from archaeological evidence like inscriptions, coins and sculptures. More than 42 Indo-Greek kings are known to us because of their coins. Now, let us begin to understand as to how the Indo-Greek rule began. Diodotus I, the Satrap of Bactria, parted his ways from the Seleucid Empire around the 3rd century BCE and founded the Greco-Bactrian Kingdom. His son, Diodotus II, who succeeded him, was killed by his own officer, Euthydemus I, who then began his rule. Demetrius I of Bactria was the son of Euthydemus. He began the expansion of his territories and thus invaded the Indian province by crossing the mighty Hindu Kush ranges around the 2nd century BCE. He established his rule in Gandhar and therefore is considered to be the founder of the Indo-Greek rule. The Indo-Greek rulers Pantaleon and Agathocles issued bilingual and bi-scriptural coins with Indian motifs like Balram, Krishna, which indicated the adaptation or at least promotion of the Vrushni ideology and a message to the society that the foreigners are more receptive to Indian culture and tradition. Menander I one of the most popular and successful Indo-Greek rulers not only stabilized his power but also expanded his dominion. He is said to have ruled up to modern-day Delhi. The Buddhist text known to us as Milinda Panha is a dialogue between Menander and the Buddhist monk Nagasen, which also tells us that Menander was fascinated by Buddhist ideology. anti al ambassador Heliodorus erected the Garuda pillar at Vidisha under the court of the Shunga king Bhagavadra. This suggests that there must be a strong wave of the Vaishnavite movement. The Indo-Greeks fell somewhere around the 1st century CE. This was because of poor successors, more stronger opponents, as well as the loss of acquired territories. The Indo-Greeks were then succeeded by the Indo-Scythians, the Indo-Parthians and the Kushans. But what was so great about these Greeks who ruled over India? Well, the Greeks who ruled over the Indian region issued coins for the Indian people using Indian scripts, languages and motifs. Their assimilation in the Indian society was quite peaceful. The coins give us the earliest iconography of the deities and earliest depiction of the temples. Because of these invaders, there was interaction between the cultures and religions. Their impact was felt most upon art. For instance, the story of the Trojan horse depicted in the Gandhar art, the Patliputra pillar capital, etc. Several Hellenistic artifacts have also been found. Their coinage influenced the coinage of the Janapads, the Indo-Scythians and the Indo-Parthians. So this was about the infamous rule of the Indo-Greeks. Hope you liked this episode. Do like and share this video and subscribe to our channel. And remember, history is always in the making.